Raising the May Rose was a really difficult process because it was just an open ship. It didn't have any structural strength. So here we've got a, a plan of the May Rose, and between 1979 and 1982, we substantially emptied the ship. But then for the salvage, we had to use a very special method. And the first part of that was to get an underwater lifting frame, which we'd brought over from uh, Southampton. And this was actually then lowered over the wreck of the Mary Rose on specially prepared holes that we dug before. So that was put in place over the Mary Rose. Then what we needed to do was to put in place every single one of these cross beams. So uh, I've put about six in already here, uh, but here's another one. And this, this job with these beams weighing about two tons each was done underwater, and each of them was carefully placed into the lifting frame and positioned exactly above the 11 strongest parts of the ship. So for each of these lifting points, we had to dig tunnels under the hull so that we could get to each of these uh, bolt positions, put in the bolts, and then put in the wires. So these are the wires that we're putting in here. So we put wires in, and the hull was connected up to the cradle in, at every single one of these lifting points through the hull. So when we put a, finished putting those wires in, the whole ship was then suspended uh, underneath this lifting frame. And then the next really clever part of the salvage was that this lifting frame was actually jacked up these legs just a few inches over a period of a day or two. So the very first raising of the May Rose wasn't done by a, a great big crane like Todd Moore. It was done with three jacks on the corners of all four legs. So it was done extremely slowly. Once the uh, hull was then hanging, literally hanging from this lifting frame, then we got the Tog Moore, the great big crane, to lift up this lifting frame and transfer it over to a cradle that had been brought in. So if we now bring this cradle in, this was again brought out and lowered to the seabed near to the Mary Rose. So that's placed on the seabed, all ready for the final lift. And then Togmore, the big crane, picked up the ship. And this, again, was one of the really crucial parts of the, the lifting, this underwater transfer, as it was called. And so the whole ship was then lifted up, literally hanging from the lifting frame that we'd attached it to with all those wires. And then it was brought in very, very carefully over the cradle. And you can see these four legs. They then needed to locate into stabbing guides, these yellow cup things, for it to bed down. And all of that was quite a difficult operation, to be honest. Uh, uh, just to get these to locate, there were a lot of difficulties doing that. In fact, the way we did it in the end, we had to have one diver on each corner saying when each leg was located. But that was the system for getting them. And then, on the morning of October the 10th, 1982, the lifting wires were already attached and this enormous crane, Togmore, started the lift and gently raised the ship from the seabed. And then a barge was brought in and put under the ship and the ship was lowered down onto the barge and eventually, very late that evening, brought into Portsmouth Dockyard. So that's how the Mary Rose was salvaged.